As wearable sensors have become lighter and cheaper, they have found their way into a range of fitness trackers and health apps. They monitor our movement, record our heart rhythms. They can even gauge the quality of our sleep. For autism researchers, wearable sensors are providing a novel way to track early development. So across the whole field of autism research, we've realized for a long time the importance of early detection and early intervention. And there's been a movement for a long time to look at using technology, eye tracking, neuroimaging, vocal recordings, to try to pick up signs of what later becomes autism in the first year of life. Gordon Ramsay uses voice recorders to track the sounds that babies make in their first three years of life. For many years, Parents of children with autism have often told us that they've noticed differences in the way their children begin to talk or don't talk in the first year of life, long before they actually receive a diagnosis. The recorder weighs just two ounces and tucks into the baby's clothing. And we ask them when the baby wakes up in the morning to turn on the recorder, put it into the pocket and just leave it running all day. And because it's so light and portable, and because the clothing is just like a normal onesie, we can actually send out and retrieve those recorders using the standard mail service. Ramsey has data from 450 babies who have worn a recorder, capturing 6,000 days and more than 60,000 hours of their early speech. And basically, we've been able to show that parents were right the whole time. You can hear small differences in the way that children begin to use their voice. When COVID-19 forced the closure of labs around the world, Ramsey's research continued. COVID has basically made us think about how to make our research more efficient, how to make it more cost effective, and how to operate on a much larger scale at greater geographic distances than we perhaps normally do in the context of a research study. Rajuta Wilson also collects data from infants remotely. Instead of collecting audio, she uses motion sensors to track how babies move, which is mission critical for them to be able to interact with their caregivers and their environments. Motor impairments or differences or delays are really quite prevalent in autism. I feel even more prevalent that many clinicians and even caregivers recognize. The motion sensors wrap around the baby's wrists and ankles, tracking the speed, frequency, and complexity of their movements over the course of a day. We do this monthly because infant movement, you know, changes dynamically, day to day, minute to minute, hour to hour. Wilson has found that babies who receive an autism diagnosis make fewer complex movements in their first year of life than do babies who are not diagnosed. She hopes to develop a 10-minute movement test that doctors could administer during wellness visits before a baby's first birthday. And we get maybe a cutoff score or a point where we say, we don't necessarily say this is related to autism, but we say, hey, there's some concerns here. We should keep a closer eye on this infant. The wearable sensors also make it easier for families to participate in research, wherever they are. We were able to work with families who maybe couldn't make it to UCLA. And we were already trying to think of creative ways where we can make research more accessible. But it's funny how the COVID pandemic, if anything, pushed us to do that even more. So that's for the accessibility standpoint. And that's also sort of why this study was important during the COVID era. The fact that it's remote, we go to their home, we are able to drop off the study materials without coming into contact and being safe. And we've really increased that accessibility and that reach.